I've spent years adding compost to my beds, trying to build that perfect dark, crumbly soil teeming with worms. But a simple experiment this past autumn made me question everything I thought I knew about worm attraction and soil building. Out of curiosity, I tried using plain brown cardboard, not as mulch, not as a weed barrier, but as an active soil layer, and within weeks the results were undeniable. Worms, which had all but disappeared from one compacted section of my garden, were suddenly everywhere. Not just a few stragglers, but dense clusters right under the cardboard, feeding and tunnelling through what had been lifeless soil. This one adjustment outperformed months of compost applications. Here's exactly how and why it worked, and how you can replicate it in your own garden this season. Compost feeds the soil, but cardboard feeds the decomposers directly. Compost has long been the gold standard of soil improvement, and rightly so. It adds nutrients, humus and microbial life, but it's still finished organic matter, meaning it's already mostly decomposed. You know, worms, especially red wigglers and night crawlers, aren't really drawn to finished compost nearly as much as they are to active decomposition. What cardboard offers, that compost doesn't, is a steady, ongoing food source made of cellulose and lignin. Both of these are just, well, irresistible to soil fungi and by extension to the worms that feed on them. When you lay cardboard on the soil surface and keep it moist, it starts breaking down slowly. Fungi colonize it within days, creating these soft white mycelial threads that worms track and consume. This combination Fungal growth, moisture retention, and slow decomposition creates a living buffet that compost alone simply can't match. In short, compost nourishes soil structure, but cardboard, well, it kickstarts the process that builds it. This trick only works if you use clean, untreated cardboard. You'll want to avoid anything glossy, coloured, or wax-coated. Those materials contain chemicals and dyes that can repel or even harm soil organisms. Plain brown corrugated cardboard is ideal because it's breathable and easy for fungi to colonize. Start by removing all tape and stickers, then lay the cardboard directly on the soil surface, overlapping the edges so there are no gaps for light to reach weeds underneath. The most effective ratio I've found is about two layers thick, roughly six millimeters total. If it's too thick it blocks air exchange, too thin and it dries out too fast. Once the cardboard is in place, water it thoroughly until it's soft and pliable. Then cover it with a 5 to 10 centimeter layer of organic material. Compost, shredded leaves or aged wood chips all work well. That top layer acts as insulation and food for the microorganisms that will migrate upward to work on the cardboard. In about three weeks, lift a small corner and you'll see what I saw. Worms clustered along the edges, the surface webbed with fungal growth, and the soil underneath darker, moister, and more friable than before. Cardboard only works as a worm attractant when it's kept damp. If it dries out, it turns into a hard barrier that worms avoid. But when it stays moist, it holds that moisture longer than mulch or bare soil, creating a humid microclimate worms can't resist. During my test, I maintained the cardboard's moisture by watering every three to four days, depending on the weather. In hot conditions, you may need to water daily. The goal isn't to soak it, it's to keep it spongy to the touch. I also noticed that when I added a thin layer of compost tea, mixed as one part tea to four parts water, once every two weeks, fungal activity and worm populations doubled compared to the untreated side. The microbes in the tea accelerate the breakdown of cellulose, which in turn increases fungal food and keeps worms feeding steadily. The biology here is simple but powerful. Fungi start the decomposition, bacteria follow, and worms come in to feed on the microbial biomass. Each layer of activity builds on the last. After two months, I ran a side-by-side -side test between my cardboard plot and a compost-only plot. The cardboard section had roughly three times the visible worm count per square foot. More importantly, the soil underneath had changed texture. 
It was looser, darker, and smelled strongly of earth. The compost-only bed improved nutrient content but remained structurally denser. That difference comes down to how worms engineer soil. You see, worms don't just process organic matter. Their burrowing creates aeration channels, redistributes nutrients, and really enhances root penetration. The cardboard layer gives them an environment they can thrive in for months, not just until the compost is gone. By the end of the season, the cardboard had mostly vanished, leaving a dense web of worm castings and crumbly soil aggregates that didn't compact even after heavy rain. Compost will always have its place, but for biological activation, cardboard wins hands down. If you want to make this more than a one-off experiment, here's how to build it into your seasonal gardening cycle. Each fall, after clearing your beds, lay down fresh sheets of cardboard following the same layering method, two layers thick, watered, then topped with organic matter. Leave it undisturbed over winter. As temperatures rise in spring, the soil life beneath it will be fully active, creating a fertile bed ready for direct planting. For larger beds or compacted areas, you can repeat this process twice a year. In spring, when planting warm season crops, just cut planting holes directly through softened cardboard. The worms will have already loosened the soil below, so you won't need to worry about tilling. To boost results even further, sprinkle a handful of rock dust or aged manure, about 200 grams per square metre, on top of the cardboard before covering it. The added minerals and nitrogen help balance the carbon-heavy material and accelerate decomposition without overheating the layer. This approach really does redefine what feeding your soil actually means. We've all been told to feed our soil with compost, but honestly this test showed me that compost is only half of the equation. Living soil isn't built from finished materials. It's built through active decomposition and, well, the life that drives it. Cardboard bridges that gap perfectly. It feeds fungi, invites worms, regulates moisture, and gradually transforms into humus right where it's needed most. So if your soil has gone quiet, if the worms are scarce, or your compost piles aren't delivering the life you hoped for, try this cardboard method. It costs nothing, wastes nothing, and creates visible results within just a few weeks. Sometimes, the most powerful soil-building methods don't come from expensive amendments. They come from understanding the biology right under our feet. This cardboard trick reminded me is that the best gardeners aren't just feeding plants. We're actually cultivating ecosystems. If this guide helped you rethink how to attract and sustain soil life, subscribe to Hydrohaven, leave a comment sharing your results, and, you know, pass this video along to another gardener who's chasing living, breathing soil. The more of us who start working with nature's systems instead of against them, the better our gardens and our planet will grow.